So today we conclude our series on the Ten Commandments. Now can anyone tell me what the tenth and final commandment is? Anyone remember? It is, like the ninth, uh, a commandment not to covet. <clears throat> and specifically, the verse in Exodus goes like this. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. So when we think about the ninth and tenth commandments and compare them to the rest of them, we see that they're slightly different than the rest. All the other commandments are things that we can break outwardly. We can lie, we can steal, we can murder, we can outwardly break all of those commandments. But what about the ninth and tenth commandments? Can we outwardly covet? What does it mean to covet? Coveting, of course, has to do with wanting something that is not ours. But it's more than that. It's more than just wanting something. It's wanting something so much that you're willing to break one of the commandments to get it. For instance, imagine you walk into a video game store and you see the brand new video game that you've been waiting for for about a year. Uh, You see the price tag on it, and it's $60. You only have $30. You can't buy it. It's too, you don't have the money for it right now. And you really, really, really do want this game. So at this point in our scenario, have we coveted anything? Does simply wanting the video game really, really, really badly mean that we've coveted? No. No. Simply wanting something isn't coveting. But what if you stole this video game? What if you put it in your bag and walked away as if nothing happened? Have you coveted then? Yes, you have. At this point, you've not only broken the commandment to not steal, but you've also broken the commandment to not covet. So coveting, again, has to do with wanting something so badly that we are willing to do anything to get it, including breaking the Ten Commandments. Let's think of another example. Imagine there is someone at school who is more popular than you. They're taller than you. They're smarter than you. Oh, and they're, they're just hilarious. Whenever they open their mouth, everyone just roars into laughter. Deep down inside we might want a similar kind of attention. And you simply can't stand the attention that that other person gets. So what kind of thoughts and feelings do you think we might have towards this kind of person? We might be jealous of them. We might be angry at them. We might resent them. We might even hate them. They have something that you want. So the anger and jealousy that we feel when we, when we see someone like that could be a form of coveting because anger and hatred is a form of murder. So in that, in that scenario, when we, when we stew on, on those thoughts of jealousy and anger, we might be coveting. And we may also be murdering because murder, uh, anger is a form of murder. So hopefully now we can see that the commandment not to covet, given by the Lord, is about making sure that our selfishness or our desire to have what others have don't break out into harmful ways. The Lord wants us to be very careful that we don't slip into these ways of thinking because they can easily devolve into breaking the commandments. Now today we're going to read a story about a man who is asking the Lord what he should do to inherit eternal life. Let's see what the Lord teaches him here. This is taken from Mark chapter 10. Now, as Jesus was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, 
What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And the man answered and said to Jesus, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard is it for how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? And the disciples were, astound, were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to him, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Amen. So in our story, the rich young ruler asked the Lord what he should do to inherit eternal life. The Lord told him to keep the commandments. And what did the man say? He said that he's kept them from his youth. From a very young age, he has worked hard to keep the commandments. But the Lord said that he needed to do more. Do you remember what the Lord said? The Lord told him to sell the things that he has, take up his cross, and follow the Lord. Now, on the surface, this story may not seem to relate to the commandment not to covet, but if we look deeper, we can see that there are some connections. In the teachings for the new church, we read about the spiritual meaning of the Lord's counsel to the young man. The Lord said that he should sell all that he had by which is meant that he should remove his heart from riches, and that he should take up the cross, by which is meant that he should fight against his cravings, and that, uh, and that he was to follow him, meaning that he was to acknowledge the Lord as God. Now this young man was very rich. He had many, many things. The things he had in the story are like the things we want to have for ourselves. This would be the video games that we were talking about earlier, the, the popularity that you don't seem to have at school. It's okay to want these things, but it's never okay to covet them. Because when we covet, we can go so far as to break the other commandments to get what we want. So these are the harmful cravings that the Lord wants us to fight against. This is what the Lord meant when he told the rich young ruler to take up the cross, to fight against those tendencies to think in harmful ways and to act in harmful ways. Now, taking up the, the cross is about doing that hard work of resisting those cravings. Now, the last thing that the Lord told the rich man to do was follow him. The Lord, he wants all of us to follow him. Because when we follow him, we are strengthened in goodness and truth, and we are the happiest that we can be. The Lord wants only the best for us, and he knows that the best thing for us to do is to follow him. That takes hard work sometimes, 
We have to beware of those tendencies to covet the things we want. But if we follow the Lord with our whole heart and our whole mind, he will strengthen and help, and help us to inherit eternal life. Amen.